Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do something somewhat exciting that people seem to be jazzed about, which is I am going to make my first like modern piece of clothing that I plan on wearing out into the world. So I have to admit I haven't stitched a thing in like six weeks at all. <laughs> I took a little break after Merida and I felt really good about that but I'm ready to like get back into it. But I did want something rather simple to go ahead and start with so I decided to look around Etsy and I found this tunic which has pockets so it's both t-shirt and hoodie adjacent which is like fantastic but it's sort of like a little bit fancier than just wearing a t-shirt out which is basically what I do all the time and I decided to use this fabric that I got in the LA fabric district and my friend Hannah has the same fabric so that'll be fun. Like I said I found this pattern on Etsy and it is by a company called Style Arc. This is not sponsored by Style Arc although it is sponsored by Skillshare. We'll get to that in a minute. It's called the Ilani tunic and it comes in sizes 0 to 30 European. So I purchased the 18, 20, and 22 size pattern because that is generally where I am in like European sizing. So um, I'm printing out a 20 right now. So that we can get started on this project. Meanwhile, I'm gonna cut off this. It says it takes up two yards, so I'm gonna cut up two yards of this and go ahead and finish the edges and send this to the laundry to be laundered and heavily dried so that it gets all the shrink out of it. And I'm excited about working on this. So my goals for today are to get the pattern printed. I also want to put it together. I want to get the fabric washed. If I can, I want to get it cut out. And maybe if all that gets done and there's time for construction, I'll do some construction, but I'm not putting like that kind of pressure on myself for today. <laughs> so that is my compassionate deadline for today and I'm going to get started. But before we get into our project, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about our sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. You can explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. Today I'm taking a class from Halise Navarez, who I have taken classes from before and I really enjoy as a teacher. She's very personable, she's very easy to understand, and she is clear and concise. I can follow her directions easily and I usually retain that information. Today, I'm going to learn about editing in Premiere Pro. I actually use a light version of Premiere to edit my YouTube videos and I thought it was about time that I figure out how to use the big boy version. Halise teaches you everything you need to know, from putting your content into the program, what the interface looks like, all the way through to color correcting and grading, audio editing, and exporting the video. So this is something that is going to be personally helpful to me. Additionally, I find it really fun to browse Skillshare and learn about all the new things that you can learn about from Skillshare. They have everything from cooking classes to different kinds of art videos, how to care for your plants, and many, many more. Ooh, Ollie, I actually watched this guy's videos, so that's really great to see him here. Ooh, look at this. This is how to draw seamless patterns in Procreate. That's really cool, especially for those of us who are contemplating ever making fabric and sending it to Spoonflower. Learning how to create seamless patterns would be awesome for designing fabrics. I can't wait to try this one. I should bookmark that. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. After that, it's only around $10 a month. Thank you for sponsoring this video, Skillshare. Okay, so last time I made a pattern that you had to tape together, some people came on and told me something that just blew my brain. Just blew my brain. They're like, just cut out the pattern pieces and tape them together. <laughs> Not tape all the pieces together and then cut the pattern piece out. And I was like, oh, thanks. That's a good idea. <laughs> and it seems like it would waste less tape. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let me show you my plan. I'm still gonna lay these out first so that I don't like lose track of what goes where. So I think I'm gonna do like this section first and then I'll have these pieces left over and then I'll do this section and then whatever is left. So I'm gonna kind of lay it out, cut them, and then tape them together. Thank you. 
Okay, so while everything is washing and printing and doing all the things, I thought I would read through the instructions. There are only eight instructions and there are very few pictures. So this is going to be a leveling up experience for me where um, when I learned to sew with my grandmother, we did almost all modern clothes, but that was in the 80s <laughs> and I was real young. <laughs> so I haven't sewn modern clothes in a really long time aside from that caftan that I sewed last summer which I'm gonna get out real soon actually I kind of want to make a short one now because that caftan for being linen I mean it is nice and like brazy and everything but it's also like it's long it's heavy like it it is it is not a it's like a it's like a Jedi snuggie <laughs> <laughs> it's very warm. It's good for the evenings, but like during the day, I might I might make the short one. Anyway, so these instructions will be a leveling up experience for me because I haven't done modern sewing in a really long time, and there's a facings, and I'm like, well, what's a facing? I know what a facing is, obviously, but like I haven't had to use one in a really long time, other than pretty pretty rarely with a like Victorian pattern do you use a facing. <laughs> so I'm excited to get going with this. And we are done cutting and taping. I've done all the things. I have to thank everyone who told me to do these pattern pieces individually and then tape them. This is actually a much easier and less stressful process and there's less uh, traveling of slight angles becoming big angles later. So I do recommend this process. That was fun. These are all my pattern pieces. I'm super excited about that. My fabric is washed. I need to iron it. I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to cut two yards and then start cutting this out or if I'm just going to leave it on the... There's there's four yards there, so I'm going to leave it together and then I'll just basically cut exactly what I need. I have questions about how long this is. <laughs> it seems really long when I hold these these pieces of paper up to my body. But maybe, maybe that's great. Maybe I will like having a long shirt. So let's give it a go. Okay, so I'm gonna... this doesn't really need to be ironed that much, which is fantastic. There is a few threads that are like coming out here. I'm not really sure what to do with those. I am tempted to just clip them. I don't know what that would cause though, so I might just cut past them <laughs> so that I don't have to worry about them. So I'm gonna go ahead and iron this. It came out of the dryer without requiring too much ironing, which I think is fantastic. So. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna iron it and fold it and half ironed also.
Okay, so here is the pattern laid out. It called for two yards. This is one and two thirds yards, so I saved a third of a yard. Uh, I'm not even being super economical, as you can see. I do have to cut out another pocket set, so more space will get used. So I feel pretty good about this. So that is why I went ahead and waited to cut it until I found out how much not. I could have actually gotten it possibly even better. Uh, but I wanted to avoid these little stringer things here, so I managed to narrowly miss them. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pin these all down, make sure they're true to grain, and then go ahead and cut them all out. I was sus of this fabric because it came out of the dryer. I did take it out of the dryer, like, immediately and shook it out and folded it up and stuff. But it doesn't seem to wrinkle very much. <laughs> and I'm like, are you linen? Are you? So I burned it. Unfortunately, linen and cotton burn almost exactly the same. You can't bleach test them because they will act the same. They're not the same fiber at all, but they're both plant fibers, so yay. It's really hard to tell the difference between them. So I contacted my friend Chrissy and asked her what she thought, and she thinks it's either maybe a blend of the two, or it could be a linen rayon blend, which I'm fine with also, like natural fibers go, because mostly I'm just here for like cooling effects, which cotton would not give me <laughs> as much as linen, but I'm, I, there's no way to tell. There's no way to tell. So I think it's a blend of some sort based on my limited knowledge and testing and asking a friend, phoning a friend. <laughs> also, you may have noted, I did not make a mock up. Not gonna. Do as I say, not as I do. I just feel like I held this up to me and I was like, eh, it's probably big enough. <laughs> so I'm just gonna make it be fine. So that's what's happening. I am done cutting everything out, which makes me happy. It's nine o'clock. So I think I'm going to thread up my machine with some black and at least edge, zigzag the edges of all of these because um, they are prone to unraveling. <laughs> so I think that's a good idea to just like take care of now anyway, but also game, getting there, doing something. Okay, so everything has been cut out, including all the in feasible interfacing I needed. Uh, so, and everything has been uh, zigzag edged. I will trim off the, the whiskers as I go with these seams. Just so everyone knows, <laughs> these instructions, like that right there, this box, this is the instructions for making all of it. Um, <laughs> so patterns like this don't tell you to do stuff like finish your seams. I mean, no pattern that I've seen ever just tells you how, that you should finish your seams. Uh, there are many ways to finish seams. This is the way I'm choosing to finish these seams right now because <laughs> This is just a shirt I'm gonna wear. They also don't tell you to fuse the fusible interfacing to the fashion fabric at all. Like that's just not a thing that's mentioned. So <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and do that in just a minute. Uh, I'm also going to just iron out all the edges so that they stop because it's like curl when you do a zigzag on them. So I'm just gonna iron them flat and make sure all the corners are sharp and everything's good to go. And it will be ready for sewing. Even these quick projects somehow get these lists that just keep getting bigger and bigger. Alrighty, I have pieces pinned together and I'm gonna do a little bit of sewing tonight because looks like I did all the fusing and all the ironing. It's all done. So I thought I would see if I can get instruction number one done, <laughs> which actually has at least two things to do. Number two has like 15 things to do. So these instructions look short, but they're really not. Okay, this is the neck opening, and I have the facing in here, which was a simple job of sewing it together and then stitching it in. I do, I did under stitch it in here, which means, for those of you who don't know, I stitched the seam allowance to the placket right there. They call it straight stitch. I don't know, that seems like a weird word for that, but I under stitched it. Uh, so the seam allowance is sewn to the placket here, which helps hold the placket like to the inside essentially. 
Uh, they say you can do a top stitch around the edge if you want to. I don't know if I'm going to do that yet. I think I'm not going to do much of the top stitching just yet. I watched a video the other day that was talking about how that is one of the differences between home sewing and handmade. Is that home sewers top stitch things and handmade items should not need to be top stitched. And I'm like, huh, I had never considered that. And then I started thinking, why do I care what this lady says? Um, but I did want to explore the idea of what it would be like if this wasn't top stitched. So I'm going to go ahead and not do that. Uh, the next things I have to do are adding the pockets. Let me just show you a picture of essentially what I'm doing here. It's not actually going to end up like this, but so this is me. There's the flat stitch they were talking about. You can, I guess, make this whole thing flat and then put it together, although that's not actually how they have you do it. They have you sew the pockets to these sections here and then sew the garment into a tube, essentially, and then add this facing and this facing, and then essentially you're done. Uh, there'll be some hand stitching here. I could machine sew the bottom facing hem up, but I'm not gonna. And... I just, I guess, need to roll these and tack them uh, for the sleeves. Uh, so I'm not very far from done, but I bet you this is going to take me several more hours <laughs> just because I'm that slow. Um, so I think I'm going to call it quits for tonight because I don't feel like I've been doing this for quite a while and I got farther than I thought I would. So that's fantastic. See you tomorrow. Hello. It is the next day. Uh, I don't have very long that I can sew today because I get to go have drinks with my costuming buddies who I haven't seen in a really long time, so I'm excited about that. So I figured even if I get an hour done, it's an hour I didn't have before, so I'm going to work on it for that. So we'll see how much I can get done in that hour. Uh, I might have a little bit more than an hour, we'll see. Anyway, so the next step is to mark the pocket spots and then go ahead and so the pockets in so I'm they get sewn all com all four so there's two sets of pockets right so like all four pieces get sewn on completely separately and then they get attached when the whole side seam goes together uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and set those pockets in now I have finally found the case for when this magic pencil thing is not the best option which it normally always is it's actually just too pointed and too sharp um, it gets caught in the ridges of this. So I have this guy, which is just a clover marking pencil, and it has like a wheel on it that distributes chalk. So I'm just chalking in the lines here, the tag, so I know where to put the pockets. So that's what's happening. Just another little tip that I'm using currently, which is uh, these go on the obviously right sides together, so they go, they start out on the outside, and then they will get flipped to the inside. I go ahead and... Uh, mark them on the inside anyway, so that in case anything happens with marking It doesn't show on the outside permanently. This is in the seam allowance most likely and whatever But just for paranoid sake, I mark on the inside and then I pin them to the outside. It's not that hard um, And this pattern is actually really awesome because it shows you the shape that it should be When you lay it on here because it would be pretty easy to put these in Upside down or wrong or whatever. So I'm like, hey, thanks. That was actually thoughtful don't need it but thank you okay so pockets are in and there's more over there um, and they have been uh, understitched down so the the seam allowance is now attached to the pocket part and now is the time of the great connecting where we will sew here and then around here and then down to there so I have time so I'm gonna do that now and it will be shirt like at that point although not finished so, moment of truth, um, it's not ob obviously done, I have some facings and stuff to do, but I did finish getting the sides sewn down before I have to go on my little thing, and uh, as someone who didn't make a mock-up and was a little nervous about it, uh, I thought I would try it on to see. And um, I like it. It actually could be smaller, <laughs> weirdly. I have pajama pants on, but I'm going to show you this anyway. I look like I'm in OR scrubs right now because I have like gray pajama pants and this shirt is reads gray, but I'm, I love that it has pockets in it. Um, yeah, it could actually be quite a bit smaller. So maybe next time I'll make up the smaller pattern because I, I did the middle size one. I need to tack down the facings here and then I need to do facings in a hem and they'll be 
some more stuff having to do with the sleeves going on but I just wanted to make sure it fits and it does uh, so I'm pretty stoked on that okay it's the next day and I am sewing the cuffs on so they are on um, I'm trying to decide if I want to have an actual cuff in which case I did this completely wrong <laughs> and I need to reverse it or if I want to just have a cuff facing I actually think I just want to have a cuff facing and just let this be non-cuffed so I think that's what I'm gonna do which is why I sewed it on this way so I need to iron this and then under stitch this facing here and then tuck it in there's gonna be a whole bunch of these little hand tacks that I need to do like kind of all over the facings all over this whole thing so I'm getting close I think I just have to do my hem facing after this and then I am feature complete besides the tacking so I'm getting real close and I'm very excited Alrighty, sleeve facings are on and they look tidy I'm still contemplating the top stitch option I think the reason I'm not going to right now is because I can later and I want to see what this shirt is like without it. I'm learning a lot while making this shirt, which is maybe, I like I would love to take this apart actually and put it back together <laughs> in a slightly smaller size because I feel like it's way baggier than I actually wanted. I wanted a like more slim fit situation. Yeah, it's just not what I thought it was going to look like on me specifically and I don't know why that is yet so I gotta sit there and think about it I I put it on my mannequin and I looked at it and I was like pulling it back and making it a slimmer fit and I was like oh I do like that better so maybe there will be a redraft of this pattern at some point but in the meantime like I think this is gonna be a comfy shirt to wear for sure it's just not the slightly fancier than a t-shirt shirt that I thought it was gonna be because I now feel like it looks like OR scraps but I, I also was wearing it with gray pajama pants so that does not help pull it out of OR scraps land so I'll try it on with jeans when I'm done with this so I'm gonna do the hem facing now uh, probably eat some dinner tack all the stuff down and we're all good Keanu just wants to like sit in the doorway he does not want to come inside he wants to sit in the most inconvenient place so I cannot shut the door but I need to shut the door because my husband's playing video games outside Keanu get with the program so now he's sitting with his like nose in the door <laughs> okay so this girl is uh, done, except I need to tack down all these facings. So that's what I'm going to spend some time doing now, and then I'll give you a little try on. All right, so I don't know. I, I still feel a little OR scrubby right here-ish, <laughs> um, but I do like it. It's very comfortable. It's a good length. It has pockets. It has pockets. So I think that's fun. It is longer in the back than it is in the front. Can I get you a back view? There's all my hair and there's the back of a shirt. So yeah, I'm into it. I think it's gonna be comfortable. I think it's gonna be cool. I am totally down to wear this thing. It is whatever fabric it is. I'm excited about that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think I need a necklace here to like judge this area other than that. I think it's great. All right, so there we have it. Noelle finally makes something that is historically accurate to 2021 uh, using period techniques and historically accurate fabrics to 2021. <laughs> this is my first go in a very long time into modern clothing so I'm very excited about this um, and I feel like I might be going on a quest for the perfect shirt pattern. We'll see. So there might be more of these. If you like that let me know in the comments. I'm gonna mix it up every now and then but I'll keep my normal costuming content don't worry I just thought this would be really fun to try something different what did we learn we learned that facings are cool I mean I, I guess I use skirt facings for like period skirts sometimes so that's, a, that's cool but having them like up in your collar area it, it, it does feel very firm here like it's very structured right there so that's an interesting concept most period clothing doesn't have facings like that so that's interesting or they're like I guess folded over and made by not cut pieces of fabric so I guess that's not really a facing anyway uh yeah I I feel like it was interesting to try to to make something that wasn't of a truly Victorian pattern frankly um or JP Ryan pattern so that was fun all right if you guys like this video do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you guys next time with another video and leave me comments down below let me know what you guys are making what you're up to what you're listening to I'm watching Sophia Nygaard mix hand sanitizers together 
she just like mixes stuff together like that's her whole channel it's pretty funny <laughs> it's not her whole channel but it's it's a it's a pretty fun channel if you guys don't know Sophia Nygaard I just learned about her apparently everybody in the world but me knows about her so <laughs> anyway she's not a, a costumer although she likes fun clothes so <laughs> maybe you should try her out anyway all right I will see you guys next time with another video bye guys